G'day, in this video, I'm gonna go through the Scratch user interface and go through some very key points for first time users of Scratch. So once you get to the website, scratch.mit.edu, click on the create button at the top. This is assuming you are logged in already. So make sure you join in, uh, sign in or join up uh, before you've clicked this button. That will just mean that you can save your project work at the end and it should save automatically as you go as well. You'll then end up at this user interface. Now I'm gonna start on the right hand side because this is where we find our characters also known as sprites. It comes preloaded with our little scratch cat here, but you can easily choose your own by uploading an image or choosing a sprite from down here. Choose your favorite animal, object. Uh, we might just choose Jordan for now and she will appear in our scratch uh, player over here. We can also add a backdrop, clicking on the bottom down here or uploading our own again. Not sure if we have a soccer field down here. Jordan might like that one. And we might actually delete our little cat for now. We can move around Jordan where we want, or we can actually code her in a second as well. We can change her size, her location, X being direction left and right, Y being direction up and down. You can also rotate her, or you can hide her and show her as well. You can also give her a new name as well. You might want to name them after someone you like, maybe Messi or Ronaldo. Okay, so we've got our character, we've got our uh, stage here as well, um, but we're gonna look at how we can actually code Jordan. Making sure you click on Jordan so that we can actually add her own code. Over here, we have the code blocks that we can use. Now there are quite a lot and this will take a bit more getting used to, but just to get started, you can make her move, rotate, uh, you could glide into a direction, you can choose very specific ways that we can make her move. We can also make her change costume. So by going next costume or actually choosing a specific costume as well. And we can make this happen with some kind of a trigger or event, also known as an input, if you like as well. If I click the space button, it will follow that sequence. You can also make this happen 10 times or repeat forever. You can also add a sound if you like as well. Let's go play the sound once and then go from there. Now, Jordan has a number of costumes to choose from. I think it's four. So when we cycle through those costumes, she is then going through these four different costumes. You can also add new costumes by pressing duplicate and then actually manipulating her hands. Certain characters work better than others, or you could make her just look a little bit different. Maybe you rotate her a little bit. So she might be a bit confused or something like that. You can manipulate so that you can have lots of different costumes to choose from as well. This won't work the same if you import an image unless that image is a certain type, uh, namely an SVG file. You can also change the sound. So you can have gold cheer, or in this case, referee whistle. You can also change how that sounds as well by making it faster or slower and so forth. You could also choose a completely different random sound as well. You could make it sound like an alien. Um, or you could make your own sound as well by recording that sound as well. Now that's your basic user interface for Scratch. From there, you can choose some of the tutorials that are available. Uh, so you can get a really good start of how to animate or create stories with Scratch, uh, or you could just tinker around and see what works. I would suggest a few tutorials. Once you've uh, found or created a code that you're happy with, you can obviously save it and this will be your project. But if you've created a certain sprite that you really like and you want to drag that code into another project, my suggestion is to use the backpack feature. And now you might name the sprite, uh, you might call it rotating soccer, so you know what the actual code does, and then drag that sprite into the backpack. Now this backpack is going to follow you everywhere into all the different uh, games that you create. So it's a really good asset to have so that you can then create uh, new games without doing all the legwork of rewriting all the code that you've already kind of mastered anyway. Anyway, that's my tips for this introduction to Scratch. If you have any questions, add them in the comments below. Um, I'll try and give you some more instructional videos in the coming weeks as well. Good luck.